In 1990, only 58 million Americans claimed to be German or partially German. 58 million is a lot. That is so whooping massive. It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. Yo, my beautiful people, we are back against your boy Shady Shady One and Only. Today, guys, we are going to check out a video. Why do so many Germans immigrate to the United States? I know Germans love the US. You can even see the relationship between Germany and the uh, and the United States. Anyway, that's not too much, guys. We are going to jump on this right away and see what's so special about America, yeah, that, that made the Germans, 43 million Germans, immigrate to the USA. All right, let's do this. According to the United States Census Bureau, the largest ethnic group in the United States of America is German. In 2019, a whopping four- The largest is Germans. It's not the Irish. I always thought it was the Irish, but it's the Germans. According to the United States Census Bureau, the largest ethnic group in the United States of America is German. In 2019, a whopping 43 million Americans described themselves as being of full or partial German ancestry, with Crazy. Pennsylvania alone accounting for 3.5 million. So, wow. there is no doubt that at some point in time, there were a lot of German immigrants crossing the Atlantic to reach America. Hmm. But what exactly was the reason? Yeah, what why? Made so many Germans decide to leave all they'd ever known and owned behind to start a new life in the United States of America. Guys, guys, why? Like, why did so many Germans move? Like, I'm actually curious to know before we actually find out the answer in this video, but let me know in the comment section if you do know. The first notable wave of German settlers in the American colonies came near the end of the 17th century when William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania, invited religious outcasts from Germany to come and settle in his colony. Okay. Many, facing religious persecution back home, mm. eagerly accepted the invitation. For the following decades, German immigration to the colony would steadily increase. For the most part, these settlers were emigrating from the more southwestern regions of Germany, such as Baden, Württemberg, Palatinate, and the Rhineland. But they would not be the only Germans to make their way to Pennsylvania. By midway through the 1700s, these settlers had founded multiple cities, such as Germantown, Skipac, and Conestoga. Upwards hmm. of 65,000 Germans had only recently made their way to the welcoming colony by the 1770s. But unfortunately, the influx of German immigrants would drastically decrease as the colonies inched closer and closer to the Revolutionary War. Numerous of the tens of thousands of settlers had left Germany not just for religious freedom, but also okay. to flee from the effects of the Thirty Years' War and subsequent conflicts that plagued Germany. Oh. Seeing such a large-scale war then break out in the New World, the dream of a new, safe, and promising home was shattered for many. For those who had already arrived in the colonies, though, life was not horrible. Though challenging, it seems that success in the New World was a true possibility for the hard-working immigrants. According to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, the typical German immigrant was a poor farmer or artisan who arrived around 1750 with a wife and two children. Hmm. They were most likely in debt for the passage across the Atlantic, but had family or friends already settled in America. They were affiliated with the Lutheran or Reformed Church, but only loosely committed to an organized religion. Record Oh, so in Germany, you guys had like some religious conflict as well. I mean, like religion so far from what I've seen uh, in the histories of different countries, religion has always been at the core, yeah, at the core of every crisis and troubles and problems that they have. Always religion. A reformed church but only loosely committed to an organized religion. Records indicate that they became prosperous members of the community. However, 
Many were too poor to pay the transatlantic passage, so as many as one-half to two-thirds of German immigrants came to Pennsylvania as indentured servants or redemptioners, as Germans called them. Oh. These redemptioners were essentially contracted servants for generally between two to seven years, who would be forced to work for a particular employer to make up for the debts they owed mm. and had incurred from their trip to America. And by the time the German influx had slowed, there were already, according to some historians, nearly 75,000 Germans living in Pennsylvania, and many others had immigrated to the rest of the colonies, or would come later on. There had been an almost constant trickle of Germans entering the New World ever since the founding of Jamestown. And even some of the German Hessian soldiers that had been employed by the British during the American Revolution had decided to stay in the United States at the end of the war. During the early 1800s, more Germans had begun to make their way to America. The Do you notice? Do you notice something? So all of these Germans that are going to America, they are going as asylum seekers, kind of. All right, because they're seeking the better life, but they're running away from war. All right. Might this be the reason why Europe decided to open their borders to asylum seekers? But the difference is this. Like from what I've been seeing so far, it's like the asylum seekers that are going from Europe, from Germany to America, they are, well, they're not going to take over. They're going to become part of the community. All right. They're going to become part of the society because they have a mission. The mission is to have a better life. And they've taken on the cultures and ways of the country that, uh, uh, that they're going to. Not like these days. Though not in as large of waves due to famine back home. Others would come a few decades later due to the political strife in Germany. And mm. during the 1850s, roughly one million Germans arrived in the United States, wow. making the total number of German-born Americans by the 1860s around 1.3 million. In the 1870s, over 100,000 Germans from Russia found their way to America after the Tsarist government stripped away privileges that had been granted to German farmers in Russia hundreds of years prior. The next decade would outshine all the rest, though, as around 1.5 million Germans came Whoa. to the U.S. just in the 1880s alone. Massive. This would be the peak, though, as the number of German-born Americans dropped from 2.9 million to 2.3 million between 1890 and 1910. Immigration had gone down drastically, and in 1920, the number had fallen even further, now sitting at 1.7 million. And even with the side effects of displacement caused by World War II, Americans born in Germany still only added up to 1.2 million after the start of the conflict. Germans would continue to immigrate over the following decades, as they still do today, but the number mm. of them coming to America has nevertheless dropped remarkably. In 1990, only 58 million Americans claimed to be German or partially German, even though others could be linked to German ancestors. 58 million is a lot. That is a whooping, a massive whooping 58 million, mate. Wow. But still, even if the number of Germans coming into America had already reached its high point, they have undoubtedly had a huge impact on the country. And it does seem that German remains the most dominant ethnic group in the country. Hmm. The reasons for their migration are multiple. One reason that is often overlooked, yeah. though didn't account for the first wave of immigrants, was the stories told by Germans who had already made their new lives in America with great success. From ah, okay, so now it's like the word of mouth. Okay, word of mouth. It's similar to what we are seeing these days. Very, very similar to uh, uh, immigration in, in Europe. Godfrey Duden's book to simple letter correspondence between German immigrants and those they knew back home, people in Germany begun to hear about the opportunities and freedoms that the mm. colonies and later United States had to offer. Simple word of mouth is often all it takes, but still, there were many other factors that led to Germans crossing the ocean. 
For many, the feudal system back home left them yearning for more independence, as did other restrictions that have been placed on some, such as limits on marriages due to a fear of overpopulation and a worsening economy. But the economy was already bad enough for numerous people. High taxes were a constant burden, and making a respectable living just seemed more likely in the new world, with news of land being given to new settlers and wow. industrialization later opening the door for more jobs outside of the typical farming. For wow, okay. I mean, like, of course, like, even if I was German, like, the whole story sounds very desirable. Who wouldn't want, you know, prosperity? You know, being given land, all right? Being given land, um, knowing that you're a farmer, just like, it's like being given gold, you know? Furthermore, some communities in the German states were eager to get rid of the lower class anyway, and would even offer to cover the costs of the journey to America if the immigrants promised to never return home. No way. <laughs> no way. Ah, so they were even sending away like the lower class, like humans, human beings. Other German men left illegally due to military service requirements, while more fled famine and frequent wars. And of course, as demonstrated by many of the original immigrants to the New World, religious freedom was often an important motivator. Mm. At the time, many were essentially told what to believe in. Catholicism or Protestantism, for example, by each monarch. For those with strong alternative beliefs who were unwilling to comply, fleeing the country became a way for them to practice their faith in peace. Not only did the American colonies have freedom of religion, but as stated earlier, the founder of Pennsylvania himself had even invited these religious outcasts to settle in his colony. Of Do you know the funny thing? Protestantism and Catholicism, yeah, they are all branches of Christianity. So they are all a similar faith, similar faith, but still having issues. Not like these days where completely contrasting faiths, yeah, are the ones having problems now. Like how can people that have similar faiths back then be having such, you know, such crisis to the point of wanting to kill each other? Of course, many reasons exist as to why people of any country immigrate to another, and this is far from an exhaustive list, though it is some of the main explanations that have been discovered. Without German immigrants, for example, Americans may not share the tradition of decorated Christmas trees, and the mm. Brooklyn Bridge wouldn't have been built without a German immigrant engineer, oh. business owners, military generals, scientists, there are dozens upon dozens of names of German immigrants who took the journey across the Atlantic and changed the future of the colonies and the United States. You see, at the end of the day, immigration is good. All right, immigration is good. Okay, but depending on the immigrants that come in, all right, because the Germans going to America, they made America greater. So America was great already, but they made it greater. All right, that is the type of immigration that everybody wants. Today, Germans still immigrate to the U.S. on occasion, but more significantly is the lasting effects of those who had already come. Six mm. states are believed to have over 30% of their total populations be made up by full or partial German Americans. Wow. Another seven have an at least 20% ethnic German population, and of all 50 states, Massive. not a single one has a German population that makes up less than 4.5% of the state's entire population. Possibly what? one of the most impressive parts about this is that most immigrants from the German states have assimilated almost, if not entirely, into German... Listen, 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 listen. Uh, apologies that I cut it short, but that word, they assimilated. Everyone wants immigrants that would assimilate, partially or completely, but at least um, uh, put effort to assimilate. One of the most impressive parts about this is that most immigrants from the German states have assimilated almost, if not entirely, into German-American culture and identity. 
meaning that there really hasn't been an intentional preservation of German identity in America, hmm. though some German heritage societies and communities exist. For the most part, it's all thanks to the millions of people who braved the waters to start a new life in the United States that have made so much of America's roots German. Beautiful. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, this is beautiful. This was a very beautiful story. All right, they ran away from the troubles that they were facing. All right, they escaped it. They went in looking for asylum, looking for the better life. And uh, 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 they contributed. They met a country that was great and they made it greater. They contributed their quota. They assimilated, all right? They became part of the country that they moved to. They didn't go there and be like, okay, you know what? We want to create our own conclaves. We want to have our own Germany in this country because our ways are better. Our culture is better. Our faith is better. We are better people. No, they went there. They saw the way it was and they became one with the people. That is what immigration should be about. But to be honest, I like I'm happy with this one. Very, very happy with this one. Okay, yeah, Germans, please keep going to America if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, interesting. Interesting to see uh, why the Germans uh, fled to America. At first, I was thinking they would say the Germans went to America maybe after World War II or something like that. But apparently, there were a lot of crises going on. There was farming, there were religious issues, there were wars breaking out. And then they wanted a peace, peace, just peace of mind. A lot of them were poor, they were farmers. They were being offered land. They were like, yeah, why not just go over and have the better life? And then some of the well-to-do Germans, so the upper-class Germans, you know, wanted like the lower class to leave. They wanted to get rid of them. They were like, okay, you know what? We're going to pay for you to go to America, boy. You promise, better promise not to come back. Yeah, but for whatever reason, they did that. At least they went over there and they made the country better. And um, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Anyway, it's been your boy, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to see you soon. Peace. can say you are me oh you are the light that shine in my way you are me oh i love you more than words can say you are me oh you are the light that shine in my way